Hello, and welcome back to the Game Bet Match Podcast. I'm your host, Manny Friedman, along with my co-host. Brad Sloan. Back in the house, baby. Back yeah, back in the house. Long time. It's been, what, a week? Yeah, it's been a week. It's been a week. A lot has happened. Um, well, I mean, so I think we, we caught up before the semis. So there were French Open semis, semis and a final. That was the big thing. Like, I mean, the grass court season is definitely different and worth talking about. But it's uh, mm-hmm. um, it's uh, not much to ter- in terms of, like, uh, I don't know, like, like there's not like no top players are playing this week really except Demoner. Like it's it's a pretty boring week on the schedule to be honest, relative to other weeks. But I, I enjoy the 250 life, and it's definitely worth talking about. Well, I, I don't, I, I I agree. Like I'm just saying, like yeah. in terms of like tennis news, like I don't know if yeah. there's been like that much super yeah. newsworthy stuff. Um, so starting off with the French Open, obviously, yeah. um, the, everybody knows the news by now. But Alcaraz beats Zverev in a final mm-hmm. uh, five setter. I mean, for Zverev, man, same old, same old. It is. It really is. I mean, like he's a great tournament. I think his level of tennis in general is hot. What has been higher, but the mental piece of it is still a big question mark. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's uh, losing only what winning only three games in the final two sets. Like that's just not really acceptable. Like bad calls or not bad calls, like, and I I don't necessarily think Alcaraz played that amazing in those last two sets. Like I he thought played he played well. well. I mean, I thought he played well given the given the moment. Um, but yeah, I mean, definitely Zverev got ten if he got tight. Like he did what Zverev does. Yep. Yep. Like it was mostly, I mean, yeah, you got a few. I mean, yeah, winning three games in the last two sets is is no bueno. No, no good, no good. Um, it was really funny because I don't know. And then I was, re- I remember what was even more depressive was uh, I don't know how much of Zverev's. I only saw a little bit of it, but there there, there were some unintentionally hilarious quotes from Zverev in the press conference. <laughs> Like oh, the whining, like the whining about the Hawkeye call, about the, yeah. the about the call, like that ball was like that's within the margin of error of Hawkeye. Like the reality 100%. is, like nobody knows if that's in or out. Like that, like it's like Even it's, Gil uh, had it's a one of like the it's cool because like there's only a few of these like super close calls like in the history of sport and like the, in that key of a moment. Like it took me back to I don't know if you remember like how much baseball I used to watch a lot more baseball back in like the two thousands. Mm-hmm. And I think like back when I was in college, there was the Matt Holiday play at home plate oh, against the Padres. That. Wasn't that in the wild card game? In, like, in the wild card the game, yeah. Ah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. That was and crazy. like it was like and like the reality is like nobody will ever know if it'll be safe or out because there's like no angle to see and it was like deb- it's like debated like now forever. Yeah. And like that was kind of like this, like. But it let it me. I mean, it impacted him for the rest of the set, and it's it's one point. I know it's a big, it's a swing point in the in the set, but like, still, like, I, I don't know. You a champion gets over that. It's not just that. Like, so so there's that, but then there's the complaining after the match. He said like, "Oh, the Hawkeye data should have said it was it was out," and so I you know, I don't know what to do, kind of thing, and like. Like, I don't know, dude. The yeah. ball was infinitely close. Like, it might have been in, might have been out, but like, you still have another break point. You still have two more break points. It was a let. It wasn't even a, it wasn't even a, like, a, it wasn't even a, it wasn't like he lost the point on it. It was a let. So you still have 1540. Like, it's on clay. Like, you're only down 2 1 in this set. Like, the match was not over. No, by any means. Yeah. Um, and then the other part that was really funny was, uh, was Zverev's comment? They they asked Al. So first of all, it, it is worth stating that with Alcaraz, he's now like ten and one or eleven and one in fifth sets in it's his crazy. career. Yeah, and I think it speaks to like you know we talk about a lot like his maybe his immaturity tactically, but like the other phase of mental, which is like being willing to battle, handling pressure, like he's got that. Hundred hundred percent. He's got that. Like he's almost like like that is he's almost like Nadal in that sense. Like I think that was always Nadal's greatest strength. Like if I compare Federer, Djokovic, and Nadal, I would say that Federer had the best shots. Mm-hmm. Djokovic had the best tactics, and not that they weren't all good at all three because you have to be to get to that level. But Federer had the best shots. Djokovic the best tactics and the best like ability to to figure out what to do and to execute all the different tactics. And then Nadal just the best pure like mental control. 
And I think that Alcaraz's mental control, I guess I would call it, is amazing. Like, between mm -hmm. being able to battle, being well, good under I pressure. Think, I think what makes Djokovic so mentally tough is his ability to peak in key moments. And I don't necessarily think Alcaraz, I think Alcaraz has more than the dull mental toughness where he has the battle and the, I think he, well, he has like a mix of it because he has the battling component, but then he also has like the, the, the guts to go, the guts to do big things in big moments. Like he has a mix. And I think Djokovic is better at that big moment stuff than Alcaraz and Nadal is slightly better at the battling aspect than the, uh, than Alcaraz is, but Alcaraz combines the two, which makes him super tough mentally. Would you, would you agree with that? Because uh, like, I don't, I don't necessarily think Nadal is tougher mentally than, than Djokovic. I think he's a better battler. I think he's a better battler, but I think Djokovic is better in key moments and he has more belief in key moments. And I think Alcaraz kind of mixes that those two uh, aspects of mental toughness, and that's what makes him that's what makes him great in that aspect. But he's a little bit worse in each way, per se. Okay, I I, I think I feel like that's a very common opinion. I think Alcaraz is, um, I think his his ability to succeed under pressure is. Uh, it's best of anyone. Quite underrated. Yeah, and it's. I mean, it's again, I'll go back to him being twenty-three and two, or not. That no, that's not true. Um, the siding sets. In fifth sets, he's eleven and one in his career. So, like that is that is really good. And the guys, and he's beaten. He's got six top twenty wins, seven top twenty wins. Sitsipas, Chilich, Sinner, Tiafo, Djokovic, Sinner again, and now Zverev. So seven. Seven top twenty wins in five setters. What was his one five set loss? Berrettini in the, in a uh, uh, Berrettini in the fifth set tiebreak at the, yeah. the twenty twenty two Australian Open, and even that was like before he was really true Alcaraz. And he like that was right before. Two, did he come back from two sets to love down as well in that match. He did, yeah, yeah. And and like I said, that was before, and that was before he was even real Alcaraz. Like that was like that was before the before Indian before. Wells run. What? That was two months before he was real Alcaraz. He was like trending towards that. Oh, he was certainly trending towards it, but I wouldn't say he was like a top five or ten player at that point. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah. Three and zero in Grand Slam finals too. Like that doesn't doesn't happen often. Right. Right. Um, and then it was really funny because somebody brought that up to Zverev in his press conference. Mm-hmm. And Zverev brought up um, that he had been. He's like, oh well, I, I have something like that. Like I'm ten and one in in uh, fifth sets at the French Open, and the, and somebody gave him a weird look, and he's like, yeah, yeah, at the French Open, I'm like ten and one in fifth sets. <laughs> and it's really funny because he had been. He's ten and two now, but yeah, it's not against the caliber of opponents and the, the exactly. He so he's ten. So Zverev was ten and two when he had one top twenty win. <laughs> Versus yeah. Alcaraz is I like think one of those was against Apollo Morales, of all. Well, that, that's the whole point. One is against yeah. Oscar. One is against the Pats Morales. Like, you know. Yeah. Millman, John Millman on clay, like. Right. You know, Pierre Hughes Herbert on clay. Like, <laughs> You're like, comparing not, that like, to the, like, dude, this shouldn't be a fifth center to start with. Like, comparing that to Alcaraz's ten and one is an absolute joke. Yeah. 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 Zverev has some like eye-opening comments and like, yeah, he just, I don't know, he's just not a likable dude. That that's all I can say. Like any anything that he does and comes out of his mouth, the energy he exudes is just like not. It's very so high. frustrating because, like, from a tennis perspective, he's a guy you actually want to get behind, like just pure tennis. Yeah. yeah. Because like he's done so much to get like like everything we talk about, we want to see these guys do physically. He's done. Right. And like I get like I understand like the mental part is really freaking hard. Like that's like probably the most challenging of anything. And that's not just like work. Like, and he's done so much work on the rest of his game to get everything like so much better. 
It's that last little bit. That's the, that's the only missing piece to the puzzle. But the only missing part is the mental, and that's the by far the hardest part. Yeah. Right? Because, like, I don't even know what you do with that. Like, it's easy enough to say, okay, like, we're going to go hit, like, we're going to go get a volley coach and hit a, sh a crap ton of volleys. Like, right. if we need to get more fit, we're going to run. You know? Like, there's, there's things, like, uh, mental is really tough. Especially for what he has, because it's not a battling issue. He just, like, gets tentative. He freezes, yeah. He freezes. Because I think his natural instinct is to be a counterpuncher. And I think this is, like, he has to take a page out of the Murray playbook. Because I think Murray had a very similar issue with this earlier in his career. Whereas, like, in tight moments, Murray would kind of resort to his, like, counterpunching instincts. And I think Zverev has some of that, right? Because, like... What was the knock on Zverev maybe five or six years ago when he was like not even getting to quarters and semis of slams is that he was like just way too passive, you know? And Well, I think it was also that he didn't have the net game. He didn't have ways to finish. That's true. Right. He had too many double faults. He didn't make enough first, you know, he didn't make enough first serve. Like that's what's cool is he's actually done like so much of the work around his game to get like the fact that he, and he's, I actually, we talk, we say that Hubie is the best serve on tour. I'm actually not sure it's not Zverev. Like, Zverev has the fastest average first serve. Hubie probably spots it better. It's probably still Hubie. Hubie spots it better. Yeah. But, um, yeah, actually, now that I come out, I'll say Hubie because he spots it better. But Zverev has the fastest first serve on tour and the highest first serve percentage. That's impressive, yeah. Like, that's really impressive. Right. Um... And it took Alcaraz standing like 20 feet behind the baseline just to get some of those back. Like, right. You know, and that was a great tactical. Like, I think one thing he did way better in this match that he, than he did in the uh, Australian open match was like vary his return positioning and like just get more balls back, hit more to the forehand. Like, like he played a better tactical match, Alcaraz. He did. Yeah. He did. Yeah. But, I yeah. just, yeah, I, I just, it's just, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's just, yeah, I don't know what, I don't know what Zverev does. Like he's, cause it's, it's a very clear problem. Like the problem is, is mental block at the highest and the most important matches. I think sleep. one thing he can do to improve that is improve his forehand. Like he's done a lot to get better, but like, I think he needs to get better. I guess. Yeah. The forehand, I mean, really that's the one forehand. part that could get better. I don't think it's that bad, but it it yeah it's it's the part that could get better i mean like the serve is amazing now he's an amazing athlete the net game's gotten a lot better the backhand's the best in the game so the only thing he really probably can improve at this point is the forehand but the thing is in rallies like it doesn't really matter how good your backhand is like your forehand you're you're gonna hit more winners off the forehand yeah and that's the true is gonna that's open true up the court more easily than a backhand so it's like I think the forehand being more potent and being more aggressive, like consistently, I think that will help him in key moments. You know, just a little bit. I think it's also he's got to figure out how to get better in those moments, man. You no, know? yeah. like it's it's and and to be fair, and look, it's uh, for Alcaraz, like you know, tremendous tournament. Yeah, like beating both Sinner and you know Zverev. I mean, and Sissipas. And Sissipas, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of that that, uh, Zver that center Alcaraz match? I know you saw more of it than I did. Oh, it was a fantastic match. Yeah, I thought it was, I, th I mean, I thought it was a good match. Like, it was a really, really well played match. Um, trying to think back, it was a week ago now. Um, it's just really fun to watch those guys play, you know? I mean, again, the same thing that hampers, has hampered Zverev. Both guys actually really wore each other out. Like, both guys were pretty tired in the fourth and fifth sets. Um, but mm -hmm. Sinner wore down again. Like Sinner was actually the better player. Like Sinner's the best tennis player on the world on any surface right now. Really? You yeah, think he, he's be better than Alcaraz. I think he's a better tennis player on any surface than Alcaraz. He's a pure tennis player. Really? I think the reason, like the reason he lost, was physicality. That's the only problem. I mean, that's the only thing he's not the best. I mean, like everything else is he's he's got. It's just it's just the physicality. Like he just Alcaraz just wore him down. Yeah, I mean, if that match was two out of three sets, he wins. <laughs> right, and you could see it. You like, know? you could see it. You could actually see it at the beginning of the... Like, you could actually start to see it midway through the third that Sinner was starting to wear down. The first set, when, when the way Sinner came out, was an absolute joke. 
how well Sinner was hitting and hitting the ball. It was just like I saw the first set and it's like, holy shit. Like if he maintains this, I mean, this is some of the highest level tennis I've ever seen. Well, that's exactly it, right? Like he is so good. He is so good. Um when yeah. Like when he's hitting the ball well, he, his defense. I mean, we talk about we talk about him so much, but he's just yeah. yeah. I mean, he's. I think he's just a better. He's just a better tennis player. Like he's a better tennis player than Alcaraz. Like he's just he's just he's just he's more solid. Like he can do everything Alcaraz can do, and he's more solid. The only issue is the physicality. And Unfortunately, in Grand Slam tennis, that's a big part of it. Yeah, that's yeah, a big part of it, and yeah. And those questions are not answered, like. The Australian Open, he won that because he dominated everybody so easily on the way there that it didn't matter. It was the joke that we had made where it was like, okay, like, like I was like, oh, he's not, I don't trust the physicality, I don't trust the physicality. And you, and you were like, does it matter, Brad? And you're right, it didn't matter. Like, it didn't matter, yeah, exactly. And in, on clay, it just, it tends to manifest itself more, the physicality, just because the points are longer. The rallies are longer, yeah. The rallies are yeah. longer, so it manifests itself kind of naturally. And credit to Alcaraz, he, he he's the one that took advantage of it, you know. Yeah, uh, and he yeah. was there to 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 take it, you know. I mean, he also played a really good match, right? Like he also like he made center work. Like right again, we talked about it. Like there's only maybe five or ten guys that can even make center work enough to make it matter. Right. <clears throat> like shows how good center is. It's it's insane, actually. It really right, because I mean, works. like. If I if you look Crazy. at it, like the only guys in the world who are even close to his level would be I would say Alcaraz, Zverev, Medvedev, and I'll say like a re- like a good Holger Rune because for whatever reason Holger Rune like Medvedev is now even getting guys. to the point where he's struggling to make it make it manifest itself in physicality like. He tried to do that in Miami and look what happened. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. like if uh center wasn't tight the first two sets, it, that probably happens in Australia too, right? Like oh yeah, I, I don't yeah, like I'm saying, I, I I'm saying like like I'm not saying that any of these guys are like as like I think center is pretty clearly the best player in the world. And I feel I'm like center is like, distant, like Alcaraz is staying close, but oh Medvedev I don't know about that. I think either. Alcaraz on slow courts is staying close. On quick courts, no. Like that's the thing. Like Sinner's the best in the world now on every surface, in terms of pure tennis. Okay, let's see. Let's see at Wimbledon. I mean, who do you think is better than him on grass? But I think best of five. Well, okay. So you're bringing physicality in, right? I'm saying like physicality. physicality aside. And I know it's hard to separate that. Like, and that's why I'm saying I agree. It, it completely matters. But physicality aside, in terms of pure tennis, who's a better player than him? I mean, I think he's slightly better than Alcaraz, but I think it's pretty close because I think Alcaraz still utilizes more variety. And I think he has more tools in the bag. I think Sinner does the basics the best, you know, and just like, pure ball striking and like forehands hitting for aggressive forehands and backhands pushing you back like that kind of stuff like center is the best in the world but if those things are not working i feel like alcra has a, has a few things in the in the tool in the tool bag to like problem solve per se so i think he's pretty close i agree with you but i think alcra is like very very close and he has um, I just think when he gets rushed on quick courts, it's not great. And I think the results have shown sure. that. I mean, I, I don't like Alcaraz is Wimbledon champion. So I don't think you can like, I think we have to see. But Wimbledon's it. not that. I mean, Wimbledon's still grass, but it's not as quick as some of the quicker hard courts. Okay. I mean, I, I also think that Alcaraz was just gassed and like, tired at that part of the season he's a combination you know look i mean look he hasn't done particularly well in australia right he wasn't gassed in australia and and you know that's fair that's fair um i i do think center is is a clear number one and it's well deserved world number one but like i think alcaraz is is close and even on quicker courts like 
that physicality part of it is just such a big part of it that I, I can't just like. Well, OK, it. so no, it, 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 I, I was saying and I hear you. And yeah. that's why I do think it's it's I'm saying he's the best pure tennis player in terms of if you take out physicality, like who's the best at the sport of tennis? If it's like a random one set shootout event, I agree with you. Like, is he is he the most likely to win like the French Open? No, because the physicality is a concern and slams like that's a problem. So we agree. I'm just I'm just saying as a peer, like outside of the physicality, like I don't think there's much more he can do. Okay. Um, I think Alcaraz is better at problem solving because he has more tools that he can come out with with more he has more variety in his game. Um you think I think he uses the variety more. I don't like, I think Sinner's just so good at what he has. He almost doesn't need it. Like it's not optimal and therefore he doesn't need it, you know, like, and Sinner started to hit more drop shots. So he started to do that better. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe again, like he just doesn't like the Alcaraz does it as a tactic against uh Sinner just because like, that's the only way he can win because he knows that the basic tennis stuff, like just the basic forehands and backhands is not going to get the job done. Yeah. I think he's just, yeah. And I think, so I think that's a piece of it. And I think he's just uh, like, it's one of those things where like when you're playing as good as center is like, and he's center has gotten a lot better moving forward, a lot better at finishing points at the net. Like he's, he's improved a lot of this stuff, but he just doesn't need to show it that much. He just beats these guys down. Like, yeah. It's it's a joke how, how well he hits the ball from the back of the court. It really is a joke. Like it's it's incredible. And on the stretch and how well he moves, yeah. you know. The length is a big part of it because like it is, yeah. he's quicker, more athletic, but he's like four inches shorter. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and I, I yeah, uh, yeah. And I don't mean to say that Alcaraz doesn't do anything better than Sinner, because I, I agree. There's a lot of things Alcaraz actually does better than Sinner, but like the basics for Sinner are so much better. Yeah. Um, and I would say his serve is better, Sinner. So it's gotten a lot better for Sinner, yeah. 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 I um, but yeah, I think uh, yeah. Anything else to say about the French? I think that's probably no, it. no. But uh, we didn't talk at all about the Rude's Verev semi. It was kind of a boring semi to be yeah, honest. We had Rude. I, 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 it seemed like Rude certainly had stomach issues. He really didn't do very much the last three sets. Like he's just like he's just like level of play dropped off for whatever reason, yeah. pretty significantly. So our no slam bet for Alcaraz doesn't doesn't come through at plus three fifty our preseason. I still don't feel bad about it. No, I don't either. I don't either. And Cliff Drysdale's prediction of what twenty six slams for Alcaraz that's that's looking a little better right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so twenty slams, I think, for Alcaraz is pretty. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a three. Said. So okay. all right. All right. Um. So, but tennis is in good hands, man. I mean, if Sinner and Alcaraz can both stay healthy. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. And it, now you're seeing other players get in the mix. Like, hey, at least Zverev gave like we Zverev choked it away, but at least he gave Alcaraz a challenge. And like, I don't know. I think you. I think there's a few other guys in the tour. Like I said, I think those top four to five guys can at least challenge each other. And I think it's in you know it's in pretty good hands. I mean, Zverev is part of the the, the forgotten generation, right? Like, but I think like I, I'm impressed that he's worked like. Again, he's done so much. He's gotten so much better. Yeah, it's it's just mental. Now with him is the only thing left to to, and it's yeah. just that hump of slams. He's fine. He's like he's actually okay in like in like other events. I think it's just slams. Well, let's be real. He was okay in Rome because like there were no top guys there. No, but he's got an Olympic gold. He's got a he's got a World Tour finals. Like he's done other. Like he's done everything else there is to do. Yeah, yeah. It's just a slam. Yeah, yeah, it's true. All right, so transitioning over to the grass. So um how is how's the week been in terms of betting? Okay. Okay. Like very, very like I made a few units each the last the first few days of the week, and then I got I got annoyingly destroyed today. <laughs> annoyingly destroyed. I lost uh the two is the I had I had a catch knob that I bet live. I actually so I did hit the bookage set one money line yesterday. Or two days, whenever it was yesterday, yesterday, and then like so that was great. And then I immediately was able to find, like, Kachanov's down, like, love 30 in a service game. So I was able to get Kachanov at plus 220 um, live. Yeah, nice. 
which was a good price. And Kachanov came back. He actually came back from from Bukic serving for the match in the second set. Bukic gave it up. Bukic then gave it up serving for the match again in the third set and somehow won the tiebreak. I think there's only one point on return one in the tiebreak. Um, but yeah. But um, so that was a pretty brutal loss. And then the more brutal one was losing Jiju against Demon or Juju had the break and uh at five three. That one money line. Yeah, that's that's tough. Yeah, and for me it's been the opposite way. Today was a fantastic day. I hit a 37 to 1 parlay, so that made my day. Uh, but the rest of the week has been just like atrocious. Like I hit Manorino 2-0 against Napolitano. Like, how did that not cash? Like <laughs> Manorino, Manorino looked awful. He was down a set and four against Napolitano, and then he got whipped by Broward three and is three. It, like, is he colorblind? Like, does he still think that the court is red? Like I mean, Here. the the real question is, is what is his health status? Yeah, that's true. That's true. That match in Miami might may have been the uh, the markings of the end. I mean, right? Like, you know, the reality is, like, he's an older player. Like, know. you know. know. Yeah. Um, I had uh, what else did I have? Oh, Rinky, that was a disappointing loss against Poppy. Yeah, I had that too. We were both yeah. on that. I Kazo money line against Feast. That was a poor loss. Um. Well, v- I can't believe VDZ was a favorite against McDonald. I think VDZ is a pure fade right now. Oh, That's- I mean, you, we have we talked about the comments he made. Pure fade. Have yeah. we talked about the comments he made after he lost to Fognini yeah. when he was like, he's yeah. basically saying like, I think about I've been thinking about quitting the sport for a while now. Like, I don't enjoy matches. I only enjoy training. Like, really depressing but, stuff from him. Yeah. Man. Um, I had uh, Mapechi Perry card against Musetti. That was uh disappointing. Seven six seven six. I think both tiebreakers were eleven nine or something. Did, were you yeah, on? yeah. I did. I don't. I mean, that was the story. I mean, that has been the story, right? Like, if we're looking for a recap and a story, and the market's onto this by now, so it's kind of a moot point. If we had gotten on Monday night, it would have been a lot better. Yeah. But Stuttgart is so fast, man. And it's, I think I think it's been dry. It's been dry this year, like the first few days. Now it's going to be a little more humid and potentially rain the next couple days. Yeah, but it's been so dry the first four days that it's been like so fast, so fast with altitude on top of it. It's just yeah. crazy. Yeah, but just even by the eye, it's been insanely fast. Like, yeah, it's got to be the fastest court on tour. It is. Well, Turin's the fastest, the ATP Tour Finals, but wow. for a main tournament, the this is the fastest. Wow. Yeah. Um, but that's why I like Mapechi Perry card against Mazzetti. Like I knew how quick it was. I'm like getting him at slight plus money. Like I, I like his chances in a tie break too, because like, I just think it's going to be so hard for Mazzetti to return to serve. Yeah. It's just interesting. Cause like, you know, we always assume like big serve equals good on grass. Something and like, you know, I talk about it more. Like there's actually like a feel like, like there's the demon or types too, like the grass grinders. And I wouldn't put Musetti in that category, so I'm not necessarily disagreeing with that right. particular example. But like, but Paracard's kind of in that where like he he struggles on the backhand, like the backhand on grass, but they're like on that quick of a court, like yeah. Once the rally starts and Musetti can kind of slice that ball like and skid it to his backhand, that's going to be problematic with him being so. Tall. I mean, he could he could virtually dink it to his backhand on that skippy yeah. court, and Paracard's swing is too slow and would just be a nightmare. I don't regret the bet just because it was plus money and like, but. But it was pretty close to pick, wasn't it? Wasn't it like plus 110 plus or something? 110. Plus 110. Yeah, like I was, because I wanted to hit Paracard, and then I saw it was basically, I mean, 110 is not huge plus money, and I was like, eh. Yeah. Uh, Murray's a pure fade. That's a takeaway for me. Absolute fade right now. Yeah, that was disappointing against your own. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hammered that at plus 150. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's a no-brainer. Like, Murray just looks, I mean... He's just done. It, it's almost sad to watch him. Like it really is. Like I, I almost like don't like watching his matches anymore because it's just it's a sad sight. He it just, is. He can't even move now. Period. At, at all. You know, with yep. that foot injury too, and then like, and he's not the he's not a power player, so he can't win any free points to begin with. So it's just it's a nightmare. It's just like and- yeah, it's it's. I mean, he's in real trouble now. I mean. I, I I said I didn't. I, I'm amazed he made it back the last time to do as well as he did last year for the first half of the year. But this looks. I mean, it is the end, right? Didn't he? He basically. He has. I don't know if he ever formally announced it, but he he's basically announced. I think he's done. Maybe after Olympics or mm-hmm. something. 
Okay. Or maybe end of the year. I can't remember. I don't think he officially announced, but he's he he made some comments a, a while back saying like, you know, I I'm looking at the end of the road. I know the end of the road is near. Kind of comments like. Yeah. 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 And honestly, I think probably too part of it was just like, you know, like there's no way. Like I'm happy he came back at least. Like because I there I did not want to see his his career end on a walkover after that. You know, at, like right. in Miami. Not that Miami's not a tournament. I know he loves that tournament, but there's better tournaments for him to end at than Miami. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. It should be at Wimbledon, to be honest. But yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think Wimbledon's a good a good resting place. Yeah. Um, Kaboli plus four and a half against Struff. That was a a good hit for me. I mean, I I saw four and a half on those quickish quick ass courts. Like, it was like, and Kaboli's a respectable player, you know. Yeah, I have this Struff over 12 and a half, which is like minus 150 or I something, but it's the same. Yeah. Like, it's it's one of those things where, like, four and a half is just a crap ton of games on these courts. It's a ton. It's a ton of games. Um. Yeah, but that that's about it. I mean, that's really my, my main, the main takeaways, right? Like, just the quickness of Stuttgart and... You know, the over 10 and a half, which the books have kind of adjusted for, as we discussed. Um, but yeah. Anything else before we preview um, the quarterfinals? No, not much. There's just not a whole lot. Like, I mean, Roundich is still undefeated. <laughs> that's that's true. <laughs> it's a good point. It cashed my, my massive parlay. Today. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, uh, I mean, Duckworth beat Shelton. Yeah. I think there's a my, my takeaway on this is like I mean again like it's the guy who's you know he's just not like he's the courts are too quick for Shelton the grass courts and it's a real problem for him but and his lack of experience in the grass moving around on it but it's also um I talked about this a couple months ago but I'm a little bit tired of this whole like Shelton's an amazing clutch player thing right like yeah. he goes for it and I think because of that we like to see him go for it and because of that he has like the top end to beat top guys but the bottom end, like I don't think he's like the bottom end. He can lose to anybody. Also, I know, I know. Because like if he's making all those shots when he's going for it, it looks amazing, right? It looks like, you know, he has like balls and stuff and this and that. But yeah, if he's missing them. I mean, it looks terrible. <laughs> yeah. So I, I tend to agree with you. I tend to agree with you. Um. All right, uh, let's talk a little bit about our futures here because we didn't um, really talk about it. I have Umber to win Den Bosch at 14-1, to 1, still alive. I have player in the top half to win at, at two, uh, plus 100. Um, I have Demonor to win Den Bosch at plus 400, which I know is a very unpopular pick, but I just thought he was the best player in the draw. By far. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough to argue about it. Given that he's by far like the best grass court player in that draw, I didn't bet it. I don't agree. I don't think I don't like the pick, but I definitely see the appeal. Like I'm not gonna. Mm -hmm. I was gonna come on and bash you for it, and the more I thought about it, like it's really hard to when he's. I mean, like who's he's comparable to him as a player, player. On, on grass? Maybe Tommy Paul. Paul probably the, is. The, and probably, there, the thing is, there's no guarantee he gets there. No, I know, but I know. you know, like there's there's some tough guys who could who could actually beat him. I, I but I get it. He is the best player on the draw. I, I don't think I don't like the pick, but I mean, I yeah, I don't I, I understand it. Okay. Uh and I, I had a player in the top half to win the draw. I was shocked that that was uh uh the underdog pick in that. Uh with Demonor, Umber, Monterino. I think uh, someone else was in there. Oh, Jordan Thompson, who went out. But like those four guys, I thought were on par with the top guys in the bottom half of the draw. Greeksburg, Kachinov, Korda, and Paul. Like looking back to the start of the tournament, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, um, you had the second I quarter, right? Yeah, I had the second quarter at 450. So basically when Baron Manorino. Um yeah. I just I prefer that. I, I was on the same point as you with the top half, but I just like the Q2 better. Like if I if I didn't have the option to take the Q2, I would have taken the top half. But Okay. Okay. Um yeah. Cause I, I do like the I you know, I, I yeah, I mean I think that but now I mean obviously after Manorino looking terrible, I'm not nearly as excited because 
But well, Umber's not bad. Umber looks healthy. That's yeah. another note. Like Umber, yeah. we'll talk about him more because he's still in the tournament. But Umber looks healthy. That's good. That's which good. is I good. Think, I have him um, fourteen to one. So um, yeah, I mean, if I had, if I had, I thought that was a decent pick. I didn't think it was a bad pick. Like I thought, like. Well, you thought Manorino was a good pick, right? Too. So, like having the plus four fifty gets both guys, right? Yeah, and I thought that was an okay pick. Like, I would have preferred him at a better price. Like, by the time I saw him, he was down to like ten to one or twelve to one or something. Like, but you know what I mean. So, like, yeah, I think the Bet Rivers guys got him at like twenty five to one. Yeah, Yeah. at twenty five to one. I don't know how Bet Rivers had put that up at twenty five, but like, yeah, yeah, I I would have gone over to twenty five and just and probably hit the Q two as well. But like, yeah, I don't. I um yeah I mean even though it didn't you know didn't hit like I think the twenty five was was a gift but yeah I mean yeah and then in Stuttgart I have two two futures picks and I have Bublik to win and Struve to win yeah we have the same both at eight to one right we have the same yeah. picks there we, because we hit it once Vera was in the draw so yep that A and then B um in terms of the tennis players like Struve's at home which is good I, I think he plays better at home um. And he's, uh, yeah, I just, uh, and I like how they're both in opposite halves of the draw. So it's like, you could, we could have, you know, like free money going into the final. I just think like, uh, for me, it's more like you were able to get like, like that was the easiest way to profit off that quarter. Cause you're taking Zverev and now you're replacing with Richard Gasquet. Like you're, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're taking like one of the top players on the tour and you're replacing him with a buy. Like, right. Right. Although I think Nakashima is a formidable opponent on on these courts. I don't disagree. I don't disagree with that statement. Yeah. But um. But it's no Svera. Yeah. Exactly. That one. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's it's no Svera. It's Struve should beat Nakashima. It won't be easy. I mean, honestly, that was you know that's part of the tough thing too is like with the Stuka with how these courts are. There's a lot of variance. There's a ton of variance, man. A lot of variance, yeah. Um, and then the other pick I had that we were both on is the Bublik at eight to one. That's actually my favorite pick. Like, this has to be the best tournament in the world for Bublik. No, like you can like rally tolerance is ir- is irrelevant. It's irrelevant, yeah. Like you're not rallying anyways. I've seen like one or two. Ra- I think there was one rally in the show. Imagine went longer than nine shots today or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's just there just aren't rallies. It's just not a thing. Like it's it's so for Bublik it's perfect because it's just like. Boom, 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 point over. Right, right. Yeah, it's it's a great tournament for Bublik. I don't know why. I mean, he should have been the favorite to win the tournament, in my opinion. I even think you could have made an argument with Zverev in the draw. Even if Zverev had decided to stay in the draw, I think you could make an argument for Bublik as the favorite. Agreed. And well, like in a, in a tournament with so much variance, having that first buy is amazing. Yeah, it's only four rounds as opposed to five. Well, yeah, exactly. And like, like I said, any match in this tournament can be won by either guy. Right. Because these courts are so quick, like, uh, like a tie break is almost guaranteed. And then we know tie breaks are like pretty coin flippy. I mean, they're not complete flips, but yeah, they're. I don't know. I mean, let let's get into these matches because I don't, I don't think it. I don't really like the underdogs per se. Okay. Um, because based on what you're saying, it feels like you're gonna you you like the underdogs. We'll talk about it. Okay. All right. So let's let's open up these matches here. I guess let's talk about Stuttgart first. So first match of the day: uh, Tiafo versus Draper. Um, Tiafo is a two and a half game dog. Plus 160 on the money line, over under of 23 and a half. Draper is mi- minus 195 on the money line. Um, I I like the over here at 23 and a half. Like, I can't trust either of these guys to win easily in any match. Um Tiafo went what seven five seven six against Hoffman, and Hoffman really should have won that match. Hoffman went zero for eleven on break point. He uh, right. he had forty fifteen uh, at five six in the first set to make a tie break and blew that. 
He um what else did he do? <laughs> I mean, I, I it was it was it was an absolute I mean he just he just choked the end he just choked both sets. Like there's no other way to but put it. Like, the fact that Hoffman should have won that match makes me not want to back Tiafo here at plus one sixty. Like if I was more confident in what I what I saw from Tiafo in that match, I might be like, oh, you know what? Okay, plus one sixty is a good enough price with this, you know, high variance and stuff, but to me it's not it's not good enough. And like Draper hasn't been impressive to say the least either like six and six with offner like offner is not a grass court player like you should find he's a way gotten to... better on grass but i generally agree with you but like okay. this tournament's just so tough because there's so much like again so much variance so many tie breaks um but like draper played jerome and there were no tie breaks yeah i think there were three breaks in them i think it was i think it's just there was one break each set okay so i i like the over here I, I don't see how either guy wins this easily. And I think there's at 23, I would agree with you at 23 and a half. Uh, no thanks. I think I think Drake was a significantly better player than Tiafo at this point. Okay. Um like if I had to make a pick, I would agree with you, Manny. Like I think like this is this that would be my lean. Okay. But it's it's a lean for me not to play. Um I just like I just ugh. It's really hard for me to get behind, um, get behind TFO at this point. Like it's just, it's. I know, I know. And sometimes I do. Like I guess I shouldn't say that because I've been getting behind TFO more than you have. But like, I, uh, I don't know, man. I, I after watching against Hoffman, that was not impressive. Um, How about Draper to win each set seven five or seven six at fourteen to one? Not a bad look. Not a bad look. Okay. Like I, I think like you're going in the right direction, you know. Like, you know. Yeah. yeah I think you're going in the right direction. High break in the first set is plus one seventy five. I don't love that. Like that's the thing, man. These the books have adjusted on this. You know, like at the beginning, like like there were at the beginning of the tournament, the the tie break odds were a lot longer. Yeah. Now you're seeing like like what is over ten and a half in the first set? Is that like close to even money? It's plus one twenty. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna hit the over here. Yeah, I mean, I I get it. Like, I'm not against it. I think it's a good. Um, I don't really want to hit the over one and a half tie breaks at plus one hundred. Not not in this match because, like, I don't necessarily trust Tiafo to like hang in there mentally long enough. Plus Draper with the physical problems and. I don't know. It, it, well, I wouldn't expect that to be an issue. It's pretty cool. Like I feel like usually those come out more in hotter conditions. I'm always. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be Draper. as worried about that. And the grass doesn't get as hot as the. the it doesn't matter with here. Draper. I'm always worried about him and physical issues. Like with with Sinner, I'm always, I'm worried about him. Like when it goes like deep into the fourth and fifth set with Draper, I'm worried in the first game. Yeah, <laughs> when it's not hot, I think he's more okay. Like he did beat Drake. He did beat Jerome in three. Um, I'm not as worried about that. I I. Uh, like I said, I would actually lean. He's on lean vomit alert over here. on first ball. What? He's on vomit alert in for, on after first ball. Yeah, Draper. Like, yeah. You also could like. I also see a lean here for the Draper money line at minus one ninety five. It's uh, if Tiafo's energy level isn't there, it could be. You know, it could be ugly. He's defending champion though. He is. You'd think. You'd think he'd be good here. Like. I get it. I, I I can see an argument here for either. It's an early match. Passing. though. It's eleven a.m. I don't know how Tiafo like wakes up in the morning. Like, yeah, I can't see him being an early morning guy. No, no. All right, next match: Nakashima and Struff. Um, Nakashima is a two-game dog plus one sixty-five. Um, Struff is minus two hundred. Over under of twenty-four and a half. Um. 
You go first on this one. I mean, the over here is tempting for me also, even at 24 and a half, but it's not a, it's not a play. Um, I'm going to be pretty lame tonight. I don't have a whole lot of plays. I think this is a tough, a tough card. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you have some, I, I don't have zero, but I, right. I don't have very many. Um, yeah, I, it's, it's, if this were, if this were at like minus 110 for Struf laying the two games, I would consider laying the two. Um, but Nakashima's, you know, like, I, I feel like grass courts are good for Nakashima's serve. Uh, the less he has to be in rallies, I think the better for Nakashima. Um, Struf is probably the same way. It actually couldn't have been a pretty good entertaining match, um, for a quick grass court. Um, I looked at the tie breaks and the, and the, but the, the, the odds weren't great there. I mean, you see that the over 10 and a half is at minus 105. I think a tie break when I saw it, the first set was plus 150 or something. Yeah. Now over it's down to plus 140. Plus, ugh, only plus 300. Yeah. yeah. So I think the Struve to lose the first set and win the match is appealing at plus 550. Why? Like, I don't, I don't because like he doesn't go away mentally. And then like Nakashima, you know, he could steal the first set seven six, right? But that's not gonna like cause Struve to go away, right? Like And I think mentally he's a little bit stronger. So like, I don't know. I prefer um, that when there's like a real reason, like a real reason. Okay, yeah, it's a very narrative, like, narrative take. Yeah, I, I get it. You know, like if you're my like of a Brinka where you like you know he's gonna wear down physically, like that's a little. You know, if it's a guy that you think is gonna wear out physically, like yeah. I think that is a little bit more enticing to me than this where it's like, yeah. I wish there was a prop like Stroop to not get broken. Yeah. Because, like, that's what I would take here. Yeah, I looked at this for a while. I mean, I did, I stared this down for a while. um, But I didn't end up hitting anything. I might hit Stroop to win every set 5 or 7, 5 or 7, 6 at plus 900. Like, that's actually appealing to me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's a terrible look. Like, like that would be the direction I would look in this match. Like I said, it's it's well, but maybe not. I don't know. Oof, oof. I mean, this line is moving, man. Like, it's now at minus. Oh no, it's moved the other way now. It keeps moving. Um, yeah, I'm I'm slightly off this. I I I'd love to see this get down to one and a half, and then I could lay this game with Struve pretty confidently. But at two, or, yeah, at two, and then giving juices. Oh, that's what I hit. That's what I hit in this match. First set correct score group. I had Struve seven five or seven six at plus two twenty five. Okay. Okay. Because I think he's the slightly stronger player mentally. He has the home crowd. And I think like there are going to be a lot of holds here, so I could easily see a tiebreak. But I give Struff like a sixty forty edge in a tiebreak if they played it. So that feels high, giving Struff giving Struff sixty forty. I mean, I don't know. I don't think, I don't know. But I hear you. Like I think Struff is definitely like the problem is like two games is a sizable favorite here in Stuttgart. So I I'm yeah, yeah I'm I'm staying away here, but. I do think the uh, if I had to play it, I'd probably just play the over twenty four and a half. Okay, but it's 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 a high total. I would like break props and hit the under and break props here like that. that I would... mean, but the break props probably be like over half a break for the match or something insane, you know? Like, like the problem the is the market's under. onto that, you know? The Nakashima under and breaks like under half. If that was like minus one ten, I would probably hit that. Yeah, I mean, again, like I said, right? Like, the problem is, like, the books are... The market's on to that. Yeah. All right, next match. Berrettini against Duckworth. Um, Berrettini's a a three-and-a-half game favorite. Minus 450 on the money line. Duckworth is plus 350, over under 22-and-a-half. I really like Berrettini minus three-and-a-half. Nice! I'm pumped about this. We get to have some debate. Nice. This is exciting. Um, I am all over the overs here. I have hammered this. This ah. is my this is my one. This is my favorite play by far the day tomorrow. Okay. So all right. So I looked at I looked at Berrettini's 
five grass court matches in the, in the past two years. Okay. Um, or sorry, his five wins on grass in the past years. I took out the Alcaraz loss because it's Alcaraz and he's really good at tennis. And I took out the Senega loss because he just didn't play well that day. Yeah. So in his five wins, guess what his return points one percentage is? Probably in the 15%, 16%. Wait, return points? Not break percentage, Probably, return points break, one. Break, return points one? Yeah. I would say it's like 28 to 30. Well, you're right. 27 and a half, which is horrendous. Okay. His break percentage is like 10. So I don't, I have a really hard time like getting behind him to, sorry, 11, 11 in those five wins. Those are in the wins. His break percentage is 11. You probably are going to need two breaks to get to make that happen, I I don't know, man. Duckworth is a semi competent grass court player. Like he's I mean, not he the just, best. He destroyed Demonor last year at Wimbledon. Three, three, um, and four. but did he really destroy him? And he had three breaks and eight break points. Yeah, it was three, four, and four. Well, no, he had three break points. He went three for three on break point for the match. Three, four, and four. He went three for three on break point. I mean, oh, really? that's I the see, thing. Oh, no, sorry, I'm sorry. No, you're you're right. You're right. He converted three out of eight. You're right. That's the one match that where he returned well of those against, five against Zverev at Wimbledon last year. He um he won twenty percent, twenty one percent. Yeah, but like, he won those guys have return points. Those guys I have mean, way better serves than than Duckworth. Duckworth also played three long sets against Shelton. So I'm not, I mean, I, I don't know, man. This hasn't been a very physical term, and I'm not worried about that. Like I said, I think this, I think the Berrettini is, I think the Berrettini is uh, on grass is pretty hyped up. I think this is an, again, it's an example of like, we see a guy who has a good attacking game, and we assume he's a great player on grass. And like, I just think it's too quick for him. Like, it's too quick for his return game. And, and on other surfaces, he does win a higher percentage of return points. So I don't think this is like an instance of like, he's just like throwing away games or like only focusing on a few key points. Like, I just think his return game is not very good on grass. Like, I, see, I would agree with your take if this was Berrettini's first match. But I think like now he's like starting to work his way back into form. And like the fact that he won that first match against Roman, like now he's kind of building a rhythm. And like, I think he's hitting his stride now. Oh, I don't know. Against Shapley, he won 28% of points on return. Still broke twice. He won 20. I mean, 29% return points one is not good. Yeah, but like, it's not only about return. Like, can Duckworth break Berrettini? No, he's no Duckworth has no chance of breaking. Like, I don't think Duckworth's gonna win this match. Like, Duckworth yeah, is not gonna break Berrettini. For 22 and a half, you need six and four. So you need you basically need him to stay at that percentage. Yeah. And like I don't. I mean, think look, there's there's some outside chance that Duckworth breaks. Like Bertini could play a bad game. Like you know, like I mean, there's some. I'm not saying like it's it's likely. Like, but there's some outside chance. Based on like, the players that you we talked about, like Demonor, like guys that he beat, Demonor, Zverev, like those guys have way better serves than Duckworth. So I think you gotta you gotta inflate that um, that return percentage. Yeah, but does Shapo is Shapo that much better of a player than Duckworth? No, but I, I Shapo is also different. Like, I'm not sure Roman's that much better. Senego, he won 25 percent of return points in the first round match of Wimbledon. Like, I don't, I don't think it's just a matter of like some guys are are great servers. I think this is a, I think this is a Berrettini is just not, he's just not. He's not like it's too quick for him to return well. Okay. See, I thought this game, this spread should have been four, not three and a half, which is really high for a grass court. But like, like, I'm more fading Duckworth here than backing Berrettini. 
And I hear you. I mean, the, the take there, there may be some validity to the take of okay, like he's he's just coming off a big win against Shelton, so is he going to be like happy about that? And you know, is that going to be an issue? We've, we've definitely seen that happen in the past. This is this is all about Combertini break, and I just I I. So then, would you rather take the the plus three and a half? No, the twenty two and a half is is uh. Oh, because then the third set is yeah okay. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Cause then you only need it in two sets. They're pretty similar in reality. Like they're they're basically the same thing. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's I don't know. So I, I mean, so I'm on the so I'm I'm pretty heavily staked in this match. Um Okay. I've got let's see, what do I got? I got uh my favorite play here by far. By far, and I love this play. This is my play. I actually didn't even put that much on the over. Really, where I put my heaviest staking is the first set tie break at plus two forty. Okay, I think that's an incredible price. Um, they've never played before. That that I think tends to be an advantage for serving. Um. I mean, I disagree with you, but that price might be too good to pass up on. Like, yeah. where is it? It's somewhere in there. You'll see it. Oh, plus two forty. Yeah, per set. I mean, it it it's still Stuttgart in these wicked quick courts with like you know. I'm not going to call Baratini a good returner. I, I think you can slightly inflate it based on like who he's played. Um. But that's, I mean, that price is, is tasty. I, I, I yeah, so the, the four the four things I've played here, my favorite by far is the, the first set tie break at plus 240. Uh -huh. I also really like the, the tie break in the match at minus 120. Um, I like Berrettini to win in over 21 and a half games at even money. And then I've got a little bit of pizza money on, uh, that's a, 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 a Bet Rivers, uh, that's that's a bet river saying, but we got a little bit of money on uh a little bit of money on Duckworth seven six seven six at sixty six to one, just as a pure price play. <laughs> uh that's funny. Um I don't think that obviously the sixty six to one is gonna happen, but I think as a pure price, it's but yeah, I'm all over uh, I think Berrettini will win. I just Yeah. I like I, I think it's gonna be uh I see a lot of tie. I see a lot. I see tie breaks and close sets here. Just you know, not I mean not necessarily close sets, but I just don't know if Berrettini can find breaks just because he's Berrettini. Okay, I'm on the Berrettini minus three and a half. I I think he'll find find one or two breaks. I think he's working his way into form. I think, uh, I think he's a better return than those stats. Slight like those stats indicate. Um, I think Duckworth is going to be a little bit hungover after that Shelton win. But that being said, I think that plus 240 is too good to pass on. So I'll join you on that for a one unit play, but I'm gonna I'm gonna counter you on the three and a half. All right. Yeah, like I said, I'm not on the three and a half. I'm just on the tiebreak stuff. It's it's yeah. Cause I don't like I, I agree with you. Like I don't think I don't think Duckworth like like I, I don't think I that highly like of a, Duckworth is a player. It's yeah, I could it's, easily see like a seven six six three kind of score line here. You well, know. I mean, there's no reason it can't be seven six six four then, right? Like it's more like seven six six four is more likely than seven six six three. That's true. There's also seven six seven five could be, you know, what I mean, like like if you're looking for one break, like it doesn't have to be early in the set. It could be later in the set, or it could be in the set that Duckworth serves yeah. first, right? Like, but that three and a half also serves as the hedge in case the first set is not a tie break. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, it does. It does. So, yeah, I'll play those two angles. So, and then uh, Musetti and Bublik. This, this is my favorite play of the day uh, tomorrow. Um, I love the Bublik minus two and a half games here at minus 120. Um, I think this is, I, it's just off what I would take. I, I, I agree with you. I think this line should probably be three, but I, I have a hard time playing games in Stuttgart just because of how fast the, the courts are. Um, yeah, 
That's pretty much my take on it. But I think that there's a discrepancy on how these guys serve. You know, like oh, there's a massive discrepancy. There's a massive discrepancy. I, think, I mean, I think Luzetti, only... will, Luzetti is breakable on these courts. Oh, he, yeah. I mean, he's for sure. And if he gets broken, he's toast. Oh, I don't know about that though. That's the problem, right? Like Bublik could break himself with double faults. He could. He could. Like, I think I'm playing here. The uh, I was thinking about that, but then I saw this, and I prefer this Bublik to win in under twenty three and a half at plus one seventy five. That's going to be my play. Ooh, that's pretty nice. Yeah, that is very nice. It's basically, it's basically the combination of two zero and mm -hmm. minus two and a half. Is that GBM? No, it's just, it just looks. It just looks nice. I gotta look at it. There's a small chance that ends up being GBM. It's not until ten thirty. Okay. There's a small chance that ends up getting the GBM status, like because okay. I'm close here to being willing to play Bublik. Like if you got if Bublik went down to like minus one hundred five at that price, at that yeah. minus two and a half, I'd probably lay the games. It's like just behind my below my minimum buy point. Like I, I agree with you. I think I'm I think all, this first game three. I'm all over Bublik. Um. And everyone thinks all oh, Bublik is a serve bot and like, you know, he's, you know, tied. No, I agree with you. He's not a serve like, bot. He actually so. like has a decent return game. He just, he just yeah. doesn't do rallies, but. That's perfect on these courts. Yeah, that's fine. Like that, that's, <laughs> yeah. Oof. Yeah. You're talking me into it. I may end up, I may end up joining you. I think it's also a bad matchup for Mazzetti because like Mazzetti likes rhythm. He likes like. Guys that kind of you know hit with him on the baseline. Yeah, but I don't think he like gets upset. I just think it's tough for him to win the points. But like, I don't think he's a guy that gets like upset over it. Um, yeah, but I don't care how upset he gets. I mean, if he loses the point, that's that's good enough. <laughs> yeah, it's this is it's close. I may end up. It's I definitely would not want to be on the Musetti side of this. I'll say yes. that. No. no. All right, let's move on to Den Bosch. Um, so first uh first match is at 5 a.m. Corda against Paul. Uh two Americans uh who I don't like backing, although Paul has been better recently. Um Corda is a slight dog, one game dog, even money. Paul is minus 120 over under 23. I kind of like the three set line here. That's what I was looking at initially at plus one thirty. I prefer that than the over twenty three, just because like I don't necessarily think tie breaks are the most likely thing here in this match. Well, and Den Bosch is not score. as fast as Stuttgart, right? Um, and, I don't know. These guys can be like erratic at times, and they can like be really good at times. So like, yeah. I'm uh, what is the what is the odds there again? Plus one twenty, plus one twenty five, plus one thirty, plus one thirty is the three set line. It's a good look at it. I mean, uh... but like you agree with me that the three set is better than the over twenty three, right? Yeah. yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think I think I, I agree with you on that. I um, it's in consideration. I hadn't thought about it until we actually got on this podcast. Um, I had looked at the match. I was more interested in um, in I was I, I kind of want to back quarter here, but the price isn't great. Um, but I think this is a really good matchup for quarter actually. Um. What's Paul that? hits a little bit of a flatter ball and he doesn't really hit that big either. I think he's better. I think he's like, yeah, he doesn't hit like, yeah, I think he's like, I think he's successful. I actually like, it's really hard to understand why Paul is successful, to be honest. I think mean, he's like, he's, I guess he's pretty accurate and I guess he like, he's a really good athlete and he moves well. But, um, but yeah. I mean, Corda is 3 1 head to head. But it's all old stuff. It's all like two, three years old. But but it's it's there. Yeah. It exists. Yeah, Paul's a better player now than he's than he was back when they played. Yeah. 
Um, but I do think it's a good matchup yeah. for him. Like, regardless of like there being a, the head to head or not existing, I think it's a good matchup for him. Just like, just ball wise. I don't really want to pick a side here. Picking a side just seems like a losing battle. I'd rather go with the totals. And like, I think there's. I don't know, three of their four matches went the distance, like either three or five sets. You yeah, know, I think if you do. have, if you feel like you have to play this, I think the the one thirty is not a bad look for three sets. I I may end up getting behind you there. That that's that's that is like I think you found the right line. I'll, I'll say that. Like I think if there's a way to play it, that's it. I got to decide if this is a pass for me if it's a play at one thirty on the okay. three set line. But that's the that's the way I would play this. Okay. Yeah. I actually kind of like this. Both players to face a break point in their opening service game at plus 950 in this match. Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't. I didn't even think about that one at all, and I probably won't bother. Like, I think if you like Corda, I think hitting the over 12 and a half is better than hitting the money line. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I would agree slightly. And Paul too, because like the price minus one twenty or minus one twenty five, like I almost think the over the over in games is better than the problem is. Like either of these guys could win two zero. Like yeah. this doesn't have to go three sets, right? Like, like the point right, is, like, then, even these guys. But could then you, like, the seven, like, mo- one of those sets is probably going to be close. Yeah, right? but if you lose both sets, you you're never covering over twelve and a half. Six and six is twelve. Right. So you need but, whichever guy you pick. You need. But it's like a head for seven. losing in a third. Is what I'm saying. Right. Right. But the problem is you need at least one close set and you need your guy to win a set. Like, there's a lot that needs to happen for the 12 and a half to hit. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a bad bet. I'm just saying, like, it's a... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think the plus the over two and a half sets at plus 130 is pretty interesting, though. That's, that's a good call out. All right. Let's move on to Greek Spore against uh, Alexander Vukic. Uh, so Greek Spore is a three-game favorite. Minus 310 on the money line. Vukic is plus 250 and the over under 23 and a half. Um, so my favorite play here might surprise you, but I like the Greek Spore 2 0 at minus 110. That's my favorite play. I much prefer that than laying the three just because of how bad he is at, at returning. And like I can't I can't expect him to break. I just think if this match gets to a tie break, I think he's more solid than Vukic, and I, I give him an, an edge in tight moments. Really? You think Greek Spore is good in tight moments? Against weaker opposition, yes. Like, against stronger opposition, definitely not. But, like, against weaker opposition, yes. Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know. I have a hard time. Yes, you saw that Zverev match being up two two breaks and like, oh, it's a, you know, he's a choke artist. But well, it's also Sinner, right? It's Sinner in Miami. He had a chance to put him away and didn't. But yeah, again, again, that's against way tougher opposition. Yeah, against Mac, he was up a set and a break and gave the break right back. He did come back from down five one in the tie breaks. So I guess you have to put that one in the good for him. But I'm not, I'm not very impressed by him. Um, I wanted to mention something, so I looked at. There's kind of a narrative out there that Greek Sport plays better at home. Yeah. I think it's partially true. So I looked at his performance in uh, Hertogenbosch and uh, Rarim over the last two years. And he is, Greek Sport is 6 and 0 in third sets during those two, during the past two years in those tournaments. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And he is 1 and 1. Seven and two in tie breaks. Seven and three in tie breaks. Wow. Um, so I'm not really sure how much of the... Um, 
I'm not really sure how much of that is like how much of him being like good at home is really him being that good at home versus just getting positive variants. Um, I think it helps him a little bit, but I think it might be a little overstated. I have two plays here. I took the Vukic money line at plus 250. Like, I just think I, like, I kind of agree with you. I think there's going to be a bunch, I think there's going to be tie breaks here. Um, and so given that I think it's, and I think like, I just don't think Greek sports are good enough for Turner and Vukic does like, he does have a good serve beforehand. I hate Vukic, but he has a good serve beforehand. And my other play here, which is very, I think you'll, you'll find interesting. I don't know if you'll like it, but I think you'll find it interesting is I have Greek sport over 13 and a half games, one at plus 135. That's interesting. Ooh, I kind of like that. So it's basically the three set line plus. Well, you get there if it's seven six seven six. That will be right. It's the three set line plus the over twenty four. I don't like that. It's basically it's basically the over twenty four and a half with Greeks for winning a set, or the over twenty three and a half with Greeks for winning a set. Right. But that's better than this. Because basically over 24 and over 23 is the same. Well, they're both over 23 and a half, basically, right? Yeah, like if you get yeah. to 20, like if you get to 24 in two sets, you need right. seven and seven, which is 14. Right. Yeah. I mean, the risk obviously compared to that over under is like Greek Sport could lose seven, six, seven, six, or seven, five, seven, six. But yeah, I kind of that that's my pick. You know what? I'm gonna play that. I like that a lot. That's that's a very interesting look and a good thought because I do see tie breaks. I just think with Greek Spore being at home and like I don't know. I I, I don't really trust Vukic in in tight mo. Like I don't trust either of these guys in tight moments, but I trust Greek Spore more. Let's I couldn't that. say it better. Like I don't think Vukic is going to win this match. I just think two fifty is a long line on this. Uh. I just think it's a long line giving Greek sports poor returning. Like, yeah. Yeah, I like that more than the 2 0 or minus 110. Over two and a half sets is plus 145. But I think there's a, that there's a strong chance that it's like six and six or five and six. Like, I think that's very realistic here. Yeah. And I don't see, I don't. I don't know, man. I, yeah. yeah. Over one and a half tie breaks is plus 400. I mean, I think all that could be a look. Like, yeah. Greece Ford did actually play pretty well today against Mackey. Or whenever he played. Yeah, today, but it was still played. like, what, six and four? It was three and six. He kind of gave Mackey a break back. Um, but then against Mio, it was six, seven, seven, six, seven, six. Yeah, so four of the five sets he's played this week have been tie breaks. Yeah. And he only won 26% of return points against uh, Mio. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. What did he win against Mackey return points? Oh, like 42. He actually did pretty well. He, he actually, like, that's why I'm saying he played pretty well. Like, and I actually watched the match against Mackey. He actually, he outplayed Mackey. Mackey didn't look very good himself. I think I probably have been overrating Mackey a little bit, but he did beat Mackey up pretty good. Like, he had the, I mean, Mackey could have easily stolen the second set, but it would have been a steal. Okay. He only broke twice, though. Seven opportunities. Yeah, he won 35 return points to 19 for Mackey. So when he won 42%, right? Like that's that that's really good on grass. True. Even against Mackey, that still is a really good number. But I think Vukic has a better serve plus one than Mackey does. Oh, by far. By far. Right. Vukic's serve plus one is good. Yeah. It's the rest of his game that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. Like the problem is the only thing he really has is serve plus one. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna tell you on the on the Greek sport over 13 and a half. That's that's a interesting look, but it's I like I like the thought process. I like it. I yeah. Like it. All right, next match is uh Demonor against Bryonic. I am all over Demonor here. I, I don't think Bryonic is gonna have anything left in the gas tank to uh to compete with Demonor. Um anything pro Demonor I like. I like the two zero, I like the minus two and a half. 
Um, you have your choice. Uh, what, what's GBM worthy? Um, so none of it because, ah, okay. no, I mean, like the problem here is like, we know from looking at th this comeback, like I said, like Roundish is undefeated. Like I've made the joke, Roundish is undefeated. The problem is if he's losing, and it's not just gonna like wimp out, but like if he's that if he's exhausted, he might just retire. Yeah. So a huge part of your fatigue based bets, like you just huge lose a huge chunk of those, I think, due to retirements. Like if you can place it on a book, like you've got to place this on a book. You can't place this on a body. You gotta place this on a book that that pays it's out for a time after the first set. Yeah. And then, but then if you're going to do that, the only thing you can really play is money line, which is minus 275. Right. Like anything, like if you play spread or play two zero, you know, that bet goes away if Roundish retires. So yeah. I hear your, your logic, but I don't, I actually went the, was looking at the other way at it and was looking at potentially looking at Roundish plus a game and a half in the first set at minus 135. Or like a a first set tie break or to win the first set at plus one sixty. I didn't end up hitting it. I'm just off it, but because I agree with you. And the other the other problem tomorrow is the the weather here is expected to be um a little windy. Um, okay. which yeah, it's like ten to fifteen miles an hour wind. Nothing crazy, but like ten to fifteen miles an hour. Um, and for a guy like Roundish who's so serve dependent, I don't love that. So. I, I think like I agree with you, Manny, on your overall tennis take, mm -hmm. but I I'm just too afraid of retirements to want to back like spreads and stuff because like I think a lot of you're you're gonna lose a lot of victories on retirement. Yeah, that's in play, unfortunately. But I mean, I'll take the I'll take the risk. And, and like, if he's winning, he's not going to retire, right? Like, if you're on the wrong side of it, he's not going to retire. That's the problem. Can you just lose with some dignity, Milos? Like, like really? Like, just... The problem is it's hard to call it. It's it's hard to, like... It's just, like... And, like, so I, I actually... I'm excited that we that we are talking about this match because I wanted to talk to some General Milos Raonic. <laughs> this is his last protected rank, I think. Like, uh, I think he's using... Uh, I think this is his last one because I think he only had 12 months. And he uh, he came back at this event last year, and you have to use him up within twelve months. So I think he's I, out of PRs, which is great because um, he'll stop picking spots for people who actually deserve the spots, and who could actually like win the tournament, and aren't going to give a walkover if they make the right. quarters or semis. Like, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, um... he he already retired once in Holland in uh, Rotterdam. Like, can we not retire twice in the same country? Like, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, it's like I said, he's undefeated. He is dignity. undefeated. He's undefeated without without even making a, a semi of a tournament. Uh jeez. Like, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty funny. But his and his ranking right now is he's he's currently ranked 197th in the world. So I yeah, looked at the I looked at the entry list for Wimbledon. Oh, here's the interesting thing about Roundage. So if he wants to play Wimbledon, he's gonna have to go through qualifying. He's not gonna make it through qualifying. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is like if he goes into qualifying, like he's by far the best tennis player in that qualifying. He is. He can probably serve his way through a couple of those guys. But the thing is, the the third round of Wimbledon is five sets. Five. You That's and I are on the same page. <laughs> you and I are on the same page. Like he's got to win two three setters in a five two three set match and then a five set match, or two best yeah. of threes in the best of five, possibly on back to back to back days. Possibly, especially if there's rain or yeah, who knows. So. Yeah, I, something tells me that the undefeated mark is going to end pretty soon. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, like, do you really think he's going to physically have it to get through this match? Like, I think it might. I think he might retire here and he might keep the mark or, or just take, give a walkover. Yeah, walkover. Exactly. All right. But granted, 
I'm I'm gonna handicap this match as though they're playing. I'm gonna probably play the money line on a book that pays out for retirements at the first set. I think that's really smart. I think I think that's the play here because I don't see Roundish actually winning this match. Right. But I do I do think like yeah I don't see Roundish winning this match. I think minus two seventy five on Demon or on a book that pays for retirements a good look. Um, on Bovada, I'm going to place the Demon Order to win in under 22 and a half at plus 175. That's going to be my like secondary play. And if, if he retires, I get a push. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. I mean, we can make Demon Order minus 275 at GBM if you want. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> it's not really fun, but like. It really yeah. should come through, though, right? Like, he really should not lose. You really shouldn't. I mean, I have a I have a parlay that's interesting, like a money line parlay that we can go over. I don't know if you'll agree on it, but I like it. I like it. But let's go over the last match first. Uh, we got Ugo on bear. Uh, we got futures on him. Uh minus three and a half at minus one twenty five, minus three fifty. Uh Brower is plus two seventy five, and the over under is twenty two and a half. Um I thought this line was about right. Yeah, I'm a pass here. I think this line is, is perfect. Like, I think this is, I mean, I'm not pretty close to perfect, to be honest. Like, I think that, yeah. I mean, I think these guys are actually pretty similar, and Umber does everything a little better, but that's what this line indicates. Yeah, and it's not Stuttgart. Like, who is Stuttgart? I'd be all over Brower here, and I'd, in some capacity, probably the over games again. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I think it's about right. I, I'm gonna I'm just gonna ride my futures here. Like I'm tempted, I'm tempted, I'm tempted to get behind Brower here or get behind the over, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't be. But the problem is I don't actually think Brower should like can win this match. It's it's just a pure like over, right. you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, I think if you play that over under any either way, it's gonna be a massive sweat. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, I mean, I, I gotta think. I'm gonna think a little bit, a little bit more about this one. Um, not a lot more, but a little bit more. I may end up taking Brower, um, is taking the over, but I gotta look at it. I, I yeah, I gotta look at some a little more. Okay, I'm just gonna ride my futures. Um, but like, I have a uh, money line parlay of, uh, Bublik. Berrettini, Demonor, and Greek Spore. Okay. Um, the only ones I, the only one of those I disagree with is Greek Spore. Just minus three ten is just really long for a guy who struggles returning as much as he does okay. against a guy who, in, in Vukic who has a pretty big serve, like. Yeah. I think Greek Spore will win. I just think minus 310 is too long there. Too long. Would you rather put Umber in there? Yeah. Okay. Let me see who I actually. I mean, I'm not I'm not doing it as a GBM, but I'm just saying for just giving you my thoughts. Mm -hmm. No, my it's actually Greek Spore, Stroof, Umber, and Bublik. So I would prefer going Struth, Umber, Demonor, and Bublik. Say again? I would prefer going Struth, Umber, Demonor, and Bublik, personally. Struth, Umber, Demonor, and Bublik. We can do that. I like that. I mean, I'm not on it, but I, um, I'm just saying for your purposes... What does that pay? Plus 280? It's not terrible. All four of those dudes really should win. I'm probably going to play that too, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it's hard not to. Like, those are, yeah. 
It's hard I, not to. I like that. all all four of those legs. I mean, like, what if you take two out? You get like plus one ten at least, minus one seventeen. Yeah. I mean, like, I feel like that's the way you should play these matches. Like, it's really hard to. Um. Like I've noticed with like new Mark bets, for example, like he's, he's been having a really good grass court season by doing these like two like parlays. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it just, I mean, so far the favorites have been out. winning, you know, so. Yeah. All right. So a recap of my place. Um, I have uh, the Tiafo Draper over 23 and a half. I got the, um, what was it? Oh, this this was an unconventional play. I have Struff to win the first set 7-5 or 7-6 against Nakashima. Um, I might also... I kind of like the uh, the Struff over 13.5 as well, plus 110. That's another thing I was considering. Yeah. Um, I'm on Berrettini minus three and a half and the first set tie break. I know we disagree on that, right? That's that's the one you're kind we're of on the first set tie break together, which is by far my favorite play. All right. All right. Um, I think the the other stuff, uh, you know, I have, I have some other random stuff there on on again. I have the over half tie break and some other stuff, some other smaller stuff. But it's you're all on, on you're pro duckworth because... though, right? What you're mainly pro duckworth. I'm pro tie breaks. Like tie breaks. I mean, I don't have I don't have a single bet. I mean. The seven six seven six Duckworth, I guess, is pro Duckworth, but like it's sixty six to one. You know, like I don't actually mm. think it's gonna happen. And it's like, is betting Berrettini to win in over twenty one and a half and even money? Is that like, is that pro Duckworth? I don't know. I guess it's slightly pro Duckworth. <laughs> like it's, I'm not, I'm not. I mean, I'm, I'm not really pro Duckworth. I'm more like pro pro tie breaks. If pro um, if Duckworth wins, um. The sixty six to one. Are you going to dress in a duck costume for for the next podcast? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If Duckworth, if the sixty six to one hits, I will, or I'll just duck and, and I'll duck out of the screen for the entire pod. No, that's no fun. You gotta, you gotta wear, you gotta wear a duck costume. All right. Maybe, like I'll, maybe I'll go buy a duck costume. Like, yeah. like Daffy Duck, Donald suite. Duck. Which duck are we, we going to be? Uh, I don't know. I'll figure it out. <laughs> 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 if the 66 to 1 hits we'll have some money to spend on a duck costume yeah exactly it's a good it's a good problem to have <laughs> it is it is <laughs> all right and then uh, musetti bublik i'm all over the musetti to win in under 23 at plus 175 and that's gbm worthy if you want to if you want to join me on that yeah probably not it's a good thought though i like the thought yeah it's just not quite okay and then in Den Bosch, uh, I'm on um, Corda Paul three sets at plus one thirty. That's the one I I'm uh, I'm so close on that. I I probably won't hit it, but it's it's close. I, I like the look. That's the right way to look at it. Uh, Greek Sport Vukic, I am on the. I think we're. I'm tailing you on the thirteen and a half at plus one thirty. Yeah, you are. And then is that GBM or not? Not quite. Okay. Quite, yeah. Yeah. It's, I like the look. I just like 13 and a half is just. You like, need a lot to, to go right. Yeah, That's one where you need. enough to get the 12 and a half. I, I like the price and I like the the narrative behind it. Like the, the thought behind it. A lot needs to go right. I hear you. A lot needs to yeah. go right. Yeah. Um. And then Demonor Ryonich, um, I think we're go both going to play the Demonor money line on a book that doesn't. Yeah, that's GBM. That is GBM. Okay. That doesn't or pays out for retirements, right? So yeah. Make sure that's very very important. Caveat. So two units to win. Like I mean, look, like we could win like seven tenths of a unit. Okay. Could happen. Okay. It it would help us get back to where we need to get to. It's a long way to go, but all right. Yeah, point seven units at a time, man. Point seven units at a time. <laughs> yeah, and I'm also gonna hit the demon order to win in under twenty two and a half at plus one seventy five. Um, I just think like even if Ryonich plays, like the movement gap is so massive here that like I mean, the, the, like I said, my concern there is if he's not playing, if he's if he's struggling, 
and just ends up retiring yeah. being pushed, you know, like pushed, but it is what it is. And then I'm off the I'm bare brower. I'm just gonna ride my futures. Uh, so yeah, that, that's what I'm thinking about. I may end up backing either of those guys, to be honest. I gotta look at yeah, I gotta look at um bear's a weird player. It's it's he's always a guy I gotta really think about when I bet him. And I'm gonna play some money line parlays as well. Probably like, you know, a couple of the favorites tomorrow. So a combination of like Greek Spore, Demon Ore, Umber, Stroof, and Baratini and Bublik. You know, I think those guys should win. So they should. Yeah. There's a lot of should wins for tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. All right. Any any other uh, parting shots before we head out? No, I think uh Congratulations on your parlay hit today. And uh thank you. Yeah, good you luck did. to everyone on their bets. I know we haven't been back. We've we our coverage's been a little bit poor the past week or so. We need to get back on. And honestly, we didn't do the best job during the French either. We had a lot of pods, but we didn't do the best job of like covering in between and, and you know, give bring on guests and stuff. We probably need to do a little better for Wimbledon. So yeah, yeah, we're we're trying to get some some guests on. We're hoping to get new mark bets on on our yeah. pod. Uh Piranha will be a, a guest again. Hopefully we can get Josh right from last year. Yeah, whoa. Wooj from Wimbledon, yeah. uh, maybe tidbits and the uh, MP. Maybe, maybe tennis master too would come on one time if we could ever get the time. Be nice. He has time. a. I think he he's in Europe, so and he's like super. Yeah, that that would be the question: is the time zone. Oh, and we got Wooj come on from Europe. That's true, but I, I don't know if he's crazy enough to do five hour pods like like we are. You know, well, I mean, this is only two hours, right? Let, let's see, let's see what we can do there. Let's see. Um, but you know, we're hoping to you know, get this, uh, get this going. Maybe, maybe a sponsorship is in the future, right? I, I would love that. <laughs> we have a long way to go. There's a lot, there's a lot of podcasting left. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I feel like we're down, we're, we're down. Like our chances of that happening are probably about what Manorino's chances of beating Napolitano were. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I'm saying there's a chance. There is a chance. There is a chance. I mean, I also have to like call and reach out to people. Like it, it's not going to happen like naturally, you know, like, yeah, we have to call and, you know, different books and, you know, different websites and stuff. Like yeah. we have to get our name out there, you know, but we work full time. So it's really tough. It's not easy. Well, and that's the challenge. And that's the challenge of like doing other content and stuff. Like it's just tough. Like there's like the, the, the time, the time it takes to put like better content than what we put out out there is is a lot. Like even those blogs and stuff. Like I had the blog; those posts take like thirty minutes to an hour to write. Just it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. I would like one of those to come back up. The what? What's our blog called? Oh, what is it called? God, I really, I really should remember what the blog is called. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll remember again at some point. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're we're appreciative of our what nearly sixteen hundred. Oh, betting down the house. Betting down the house. That's right. Yeah, that's that's the name of it. But sixteen hundred followers, so we're appreciative to uh, every single one of you, and uh, thanks for following us. We we're still pinching. And a lot of good commentary out there still. You know, a lot of good commentary on our posts are you know. So always always happy to see that. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys. Well, Manny, before we go. Yep. How about them Celtics? <laughs> that's right that's why i don't do a basketball pod <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh yeah it's a little hard to worry about closing time and you're always down 20 in the fourth quarter yeah and complaining about ref complaining to refs you know like maybe you should focus on basketball instead of complaining and bitching all the time but yeah all right everyone have a good night all right see you everyone yeah